In the world of gemstones and jewellery, one of the three most important professions is that of the gemstone cutter. Over the years, I've gained my Bachelor of Science in Geology, multiple diplomas in Gemology, I've started a successful gem trading and consultancy business, and I've cut hundreds of gemstones, but always as either a cabochon or a carving. Yet the cutting technique that arguably adds the greatest amount of value to most stones is the one technique I'm yet to master. This is the technique known as faceting. Faceting is an integral part of the gem trade, and knowing its secrets is not only important to the cutters themselves, but can also be a great aid to anybody looking to buy gemstones, especially gem rough. So, I've come back to Bangkok where the Institute of Gem Trading have kindly let me take part in their two-week intensive course, Cutting and Recutting for Gem Business. And now, after around 70 hours of faceting, I'm going to sit down with the course creator, Justin Prim, and we're going to give you a quick overview of the course and also let you know how both myself and the other students found the experience. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and you? Not too bad. <laughs> Alright Justin, thanks so much for having me. Uh, can you give us a bit of a rundown day by day of what we've gone through on the course? Yeah, so um, the first day was kind of an introductory day, so I walked everyone through um, what is faceting, introducing them to some of the tools, and starting to talk about the science behind what makes a good stone. So we did some preforming that afternoon, if you remember. So that was the first time that we really got our hands dirty uh, with really changing the shape of a rough stone. And this was the sort of day where we actually, well the only time where we actually got to get a stone and kind of pick which one we wanted to actually get that rough evaluation side of the course, wasn't it? Yeah, first day. yeah, exactly. So we also learned how to look at some rough, um, just a kind of a brief sample, because we have a whole class about looking at rough, but I just wanted to have some time dedicated to be able to say, here's a pile of rough, let's pull out the good stuff and, and transform it into something else. And then so, Kind of the, the first stone begins on the first day. We, we go through that process of looking at rough, and then on the second day I show you this is the handpiece, this is how the, the fastening machine works, and we learn how to do the dopping, and everybody starts to cut the first facet. So even on the second day of class, we're already starting to work on a serious project, which ends up coming to a conclusion on the third day, which is when I introduce the polishing techniques. So we started with the, the round brilliant cut. I mean, what's the, what's the logic behind that? Why do we start with the round brilliant? Well, I wanted to do the round brilliant first, partially because it's a classic cut that everybody's heard of, whether they've actually seen one or not. Everyone knows that phrase. But also, the round brilliant is a good stone for the first stone because um, it has a lot of facets. It's a good challenge, but it also kind of gives you a lot of room to make some mistakes and still be able to make a you know, you know, really good, beautiful stone. The first stone teaches us all the foundational techniques that we need, that we need to know to operate the machine. Um, the second stone is going to be the square step cut. My idea behind the stones that we do in the class is we're looking at the most popular stones that we see in the gem trade. The mixed cut is the most complicated cut that we're going to do. It takes a long time. There's a lot more facets than all the, the previous cuts. So the third stone is usually where everything starts to click in. And it's usually when I really see the transformation from not really understanding what's causing what to happen to, you know, the sort of illuminating moment when they really understand like, oh, I'm manipulating the stone. I'm in control of the shape of all of these facets. And it usually takes those three stones to get to that point. Um, yeah, this was definitely where it started getting a bit more complicated. You see how now you've got to go, okay, how am I going to work from the diagram rather than just completely rely on the yeah. diagram? Because also the third stone is really where we start improvising. So I think what we all found in the course, like the most rewarding part of it, was actually the recutting of the poorly cut stone. What made you decide to include this in the course? Well, recutting was always going to be one of the main points of the course. So there's a lot of ways that you can learn to cut a stone from books, uh, videos, I, but I haven't seen much guidance for actually taking an already cut stone, putting it into your machine, and then transforming it into something else. But in reality, recutting is, a, is probably one of the bigger parts of the trade. You know, for my personal business, recutting is, is huge. It's, it's more often than not what people are asking us to do over rough cutting. It's the sort of thing where 
you've got so many poorly cut stones in the market and there is probably a market for those poorly cut stones but actually having the ability to look at a stone and go okay I'm gonna buy that stone and I know I can recut it to be a better one or I can keep it as it is but actually having that little bit of knowledge it gives you the power to actually make that decision yourself yeah and it really the fact that you've already done one in the class it's also giving you the confidence because you can have all kinds of knowledge but until you've actually done it with your own hands and seen that this is the process, this is how much I lost in the weight, you know, so you can start to learn how to do that kind of math. You know, like we said in class, it's not just about can you cut it, because you can recut any stone. It's really about can I cut it and make money, or can I cut it and add value or beauty, depending on what your goal is. So we always had a bit of a lecture at the beginning of each day, and for me I think one of the ones that was probably the most interesting was actually for the recutting. There we got to see the stones before, the stones after, the weight before and after, sometimes the value before and after, and just how they looked. And I found that this was something that got me really excited about actually getting to work on the stone. And then, you know, each day we had these different lectures. I mean, what, what was your sort of reasoning behind each, each of these lectures? Well, I wanted to make the class really comprehensive. You know, like the name says, it's not just how to cut a gemstone, because there's lots of teachers and lots of books that teach you how to cut a gemstone. But this is about how to cut a gemstone for the professional environment, you know, for the gem trade, for your gem business. And so I want anyone that comes through this course to be um, well-rounded, you know. So if you, if you are advertising yourself as a professional lapidary, as a professional gem cutter, you know, you should know about Melly. You might want to know about the Swiss cutting industry. You might want to have some historical context in what you're doing. And for the recutting lecture, you know, because people are just learning about recutting now, I want them to be able to see what's possible. I like this recutting photo lecture a lot because I'm updating it all the time with new pictures and new videos from my own business life. But it's good because it's getting the students excited to see what can they actually make and, what, and how can they transform the stone because that's what our final project is going to be. So when you see all of these before and after photos and you start to think about, oh, wow, you know, the, the stone really does transform a lot. So the class had quite an interesting dynamic in the sense of having two instructors. We had yourself coming from the more kind of technical academic background and then we had Serif, who's a master cutter from Sri Lanka. How did he come into the scene? How is he a part of the class? I started writing the course before I had met Serif. He works with a lot of the bigger um, gemstone dealers in Bangkok, and he works with some of the founders of the school. So as I was, you know, in the process of writing the course, you know, and we knew that there was going to be another teacher, you know, and I, I wanted there to be uh, someone with more sort of um, mastery and seniority than me. Um, so we were lucky enough to get Sarah. Now the Sarah story is pretty, it's pretty interesting. He was the master cutter in Yavorsky's factory since the factory began in the early 90s. So he's been working with top, top, top stones for, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, and he's self-taught, but his skill level is just unbelievable. You know, it, he's bringing stones in every day to show the students. You know, he, he really understands gemstones just intuitively, you know, he, he, he really sleeps and eats and dreams gemstone cutting and he really understands all the problems that can come up. So the fact that both of us can be in the classroom together and giving these two different points, you know, like you said, me from, you know, a more academic and historical and kind of research point of view, but also um, with direct experience and then having Sarah come from a very um, kind of work oriented mode where he understands very intuitively how to save weight, how to retain color, how to create you know the best visual um, effect in a stone, bringing out the beauty but also being very mindful of the needs of your customer which is always going to be about weight and money. And I think for me as well, what was cool actually having both of you as instructors was the fact that sometimes you could attack a problem from two different ways. And sometimes you sort of just need a second way to look at things and actually having two instructors with such sort of different backgrounds really sort of helped with that sort of thing I found. It was nice to kind of have that contrast between the teaching styles. So you just finished the course, you've done two weeks of intensive cutting, 
you finish your first four stones ever. How is this new skill set and new knowledge base going to affect you and your business? Yeah, so for me, I think the main outcome from this is really understanding the stones that I'm buying a lot better. You know, I've been cutting cabochons and carvings for so many years now, but I've never really taken the time to learn faceting properly. And I do buy a lot of rough stones. And when you're buying rough, you can get a general idea of what you're buying just through experience. But the experience of actually faceting a stone from start to finish really gives you so much more knowledge about what you're doing. For me, you know, it, it's all about making what I do better. You know, I, I go to Africa, I go to these places and I buy rough stones and actually having the knowledge of exactly how to cut the stone I think is going to be quite empowering for me. I thought it was a really great experience. Uh, I'm here traveling through Asia on a mission to become an uh, expert in colored gemstones and I thought that this would be a great opportunity for me to increase my knowledge in this field and it's really been everything I expected um, and more. I learned a lot about cutting gemstones, what makes a quality cut versus a poor one. Learned about color positioning in gemstones, a bit about selecting rough. So overall it was a great experience. Um, yeah, I would recommend it for anyone who wants to for increase their knowledge in this field. So what was the most challenging part of the course? To be honest, you might think it would be placing the facets in the correct position or keeping the, you know, the most weight you can in the stone while retaining the best color. But for me, honestly, I had the most trouble with centering the stone on the dock. A uh, little thing you'll learn about if you come take this class. You know, I, I've kind of kept track of all the students and what they're doing now. And it's kind of incredible to see, you know, after two weeks of training, the people who actually get the machine and go home and start cutting, you know, one year later or even six months later to see how they're, you know, transforming their business by adding this new skill, whether it's more on the intellectual side, you know, buying rough because you have this new knowledge or actually taking your own material, cutting it and either selling it or putting it into jewelry. It's kind of a skill that's going to be with you forever and it's probably going to change your entire interaction with gemstones. You're never going to see the gemstone in the same way once you know how to cut it. Through the skills that you learn in this class, you have new options. So you, if you want to be the gem cutter, you want to be the gemstone buyer, you want to be the person who actually can go into the market and figure out what stones can be recut and add value. You know, there's so many possibilities uh, for someone who's trained in gem cutting. It's really a skill that can improve all aspects of your gemstone business and gemstone trading life. Well, Justin, thanks so much for having me here. It's been a great time. I really enjoyed my time learning how to facet stones and getting into all the theory, all the practice. Uh, I look forward to coming back to Bangkok next time. And next time I'm here, perhaps I'll get to have a look at the advanced fasting course. Yeah, well, we'd love to have you. Thanks for being here. For me and Sarah both, it's always you know, our ultimate pleasure to pass on this knowledge and ultimately to make more gem cutters. So go out there and cut some stones. Thanks so much. Cool. Okay. Alrighty.